Hello, hello. It's Camille here with More Than Whelan and Remote Work School. And we are live by a miracle because I literally just pulled up in a parking lot to do this live. And I have a little background for you and then I'll get into what I'm gonna cover today. I see Julie joining. Hey there, good to see you. Yeah, drop uh, a comment in the chat so I know you're here and I can greet you. Hey Liz. <laughs> Um, I know you can relate to looking for internet. So if you are on my email list, then you got an email from me this morning explaining that we have had some internet woes and I had to go searching for internet today, which is every digital nomad and RVers worst nightmare, remote workers worst nightmare. But I... <laughs> You can see the uh, passenger seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you can't see in the back of my car. I, I'm not showing you guys that. Oh, good. Here comes someone pulling in next to me. That's not distracting. Anyway, um, internet. I'm going to kick it off today with that because uh, it's rare that we have internet challenges this uh, badly. Really, most of the time, 90% of the time, we're fine with internet. And I'll, I'll give some specific uh, tips later when I answered uh, Richard's question. So if you're on today, Richard, I'll answer your question. But you gotta have plan A, B, and C as a backup. Now, I haven't had to rely on any real internet backup plans for about a year. So I do pretty darn well with internet. And I work, as you know, fully online 100% of the time. I'm uploading videos, downloading videos, watching lives and going lives, and I get by. So this one threw me for a loop, uh, but here I am. I'm that committed to uh, going live for you today. All right, I am gonna cover today the six tips for finding remote jobs. I'm gonna answer questions that were submitted by readers and folks on Facebook. Uh, I'm gonna, if I have time, I'll answer any questions in the chat that you guys put in today. And uh, last week I covered the seven paths for remote, for the seven paths of remote work, which gives you all the options. So if you haven't gone back and gotten that free email course, do that at the end of this video because it's really gonna set the foundation for what I'm going to talk about today. All right, so I'm gonna get into this, but let me just check the chat. I've gotta get up close on the phone, which is not my preference, because then you get under my chin, which is never good. All right, here we go, six tips. Number one, and by the way, I'll have a blog post that goes with this, hopefully by the end of the week. Again, we had some internet challenges. I just, we couldn't get it to upload. We've got all kinds of great new content. All right, so here we go. Tip number one is your best bet for finding remote jobs is by networking. Now I've said this before, this isn't new information, but I just wanted to go a little bit deeper into this. Hey Dick, thanks for joining. What do I mean by network? Because some people say, well, what, I used to network, I've been networking for years, but in the days of social media and online stuff, networking is dead. Well, no, it really isn't. It's just modified. We do it differently now. You should still absolutely go to in-person events if you can, meet people in person. That's still a tried and true method of networking, but you should also be networking online. And what that looks like is being in online communities like Facebook, for example, the Remote Work Journey page uh, or group. If you're not in there, go in there. Where there's lots of networking going on. Um, if you're in other groups, if you're networking on sites like LinkedIn, um, Upwork, you know, Twitter, Instagram, you can use the same skills of networking, which is really just saying, hello, how are you? I'm Camille, this is what I do, how can I help you? It works the same way, and in fact, it's even more powerful in today's environment because there are so many places to do it instead of just having to do it Tuesday night at some mixer you went to back in the day, like I used to do. So that's number one. Number two, you really need to know your skills. Now you've heard me talk about this too, but I wanna get a little bit deeper today into that and give you some examples. You need to know your skills. I mean, you can't just say, oh, I'm a computer coder, or I'm an admin assistant, or I write copy. You really have to give some very specific answers because if you're in conversations with people when you're networking, you need to be able to respond to what they need with what you do, or be able to offer some helpful advice. So I wanna give you an example of that. If you and I were talking on the phone, which is old school, I know, but just 
go with me on this journey. If we're on the phone and I say to you, what are the three things that you do best? What would you say? Like right now, what would you tell me? What are the three things you do best? Now, if you don't have that answer prepared and you're not able to tell me off the top of your head, that's a place to start. I'm going to give you my answers if somebody asked me. Now, I have an advantage. I've worked on this a little bit. If someone asked me, Camille, what are the three things you do best? I would say, well, number one, I'm a great listener. People always tell me they feel really heard when they talk to me. Number two, I'm an excellent trainer. I've been doing training online and in classrooms for 20 years, and people tell me that my course and my coaching has been very impactful to them. And lastly, I see talent in people they can't see in themselves. This uh, puts me in a position to help them feel more confident about themselves. And by the way, that last one about seeing talent, that's my secret sauce. I do that better than most people. Now, did you hear how succinct and crisp that was? That is the place you need to get to. You've got to keep it high level so that people can absorb it and understand how you can help them. And if it sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, which we talked about last week, I am. You need to. You need to be able to say what you do well and how it can help people. I see more people joining. I see Wendy and Pam and, oh, Dick, I love your answers. What Dick is best at is writing, project management, and curriculum development. I didn't know that about you. So that's very interesting that I'm just learning that. Let me see what other comments there are. By the way, if you're just joining, I'm in my car. All right, number three, you need to refresh your resume specifically for remote work. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into this one because I've talked about this before and I will link to a blog post uh, that I've written about this that will give you very specific tips on how to do this. But I wanna answer Heather's question because she asked about this in the Remote Work Journey group. Heather, now I know you have access to Remote Work 101. Uh, the course that I teach and in there in module, ooh, I think it's module four, lesson three, there's a resume lesson in there that you should go in and grab and follow that format and that is gonna help you get past that hurdle because I know you haven't updated your resume in many, many years. You're not alone, that is really typical. So remember with a remote work resume, you guys, it's gotta have keywords. It's gotta get past the, uh, what are called applicant tracking systems. These are the bots that are looking for keywords in your resume. Kelly Buckley, hello, it's so good to see you. Kelly and I used to work together. All right, any other comments? Nothing yet. All right, number four, I'm going over the tips, top six tips for finding remote jobs. Number four, you have to look in the right places. So what people tend to do is they tend to either do too little or too much. So some people will say, well, I haven't found anything yet online. And I say, well, where are you looking? And they say flex jobs. That's not enough. You need to be in more places. Like I said, you need to be networking. You should be in different communities or people are spread too thin in too many places. They're everywhere. They're on this platform, that platform. They're kind of talking in this platform. They're sort of posting in that platform. That is not a good strategy. I recommend you pick three platforms to start with. Go all in on those three. I can't tell you the best ones because it's going to depend on what type of job you want. You know, if you want a freelance, Upwork's a great place to be. If you want, actually, any type of remote job, you guys, a great place to be is Craigslist. People really underestimate that. You can find all kinds of stuff there. Uh, perhaps it's Flex Jobs because Flex Jobs is a platform where they weed out a lot of scams. But you've got to do your research. I do have a um, resource I'll link to later uh, called the 21 Remote Work Websites. You can go down the list and see which platforms work best for what you're looking for. All right, the fifth tip I'm going to give you is you need to know some common technologies. So people will say to me, I, uh, I can't work online because I don't know technology today. Well, let me give you a tip. If you're watching this right now, live or recorded, you already know how to use Facebook. That's number one. If you watched any YouTube videos recently, you know how to use YouTube. You're already using some of the top platforms out there, so you get the gist of how this stuff works. If you've ever been on a video conference call, if you're texting people, if you're using Messenger, these are all technologies that you can transfer into working online. So if you're here today, you do have some core stuff. Now, later when I link to the blog post, I will have some specific technologies that you can get started with if this is an area of improvement for you. 
All right, the last tip I'm going to give you in probably one of the most important ones is you have to change your thinking. What do I mean by that? Again, people will give me all these reasons of why they're not qualified. I don't have confidence. I don't want to toot my own horn. I've never worked online. It makes me, I'm intimidated. I don't want to have to go live from my car like I am today. I totally get it. But what you need to do is change your thinking and start with how are you qualified? Why are you qualified? And if you go through some of the tips I gave you here today, you're going to come up with those reasons. So again, you have to change your thinking a little bit there. You also have to change your thinking around what's out there. Not every job has to be online or require a lot of technology. There are lots of jobs you can do that are seasonal, that are location based, that um, don't require you to use a lot of technology. Some maybe you just get on the phone. So the sky is the limit, but you do need to figure out what it is you want and then do a little bit of research, which of course I'll help you with with my resources. All right, let me just scroll through the um, chat here. Kelly says, I found mine on Indeed and by putting remote as a location. Kelly, you're so smart. Thank you for that tip. So when you do a job search on any of these platforms, when you put words like remote in quotes or um, digital or I'm trying to think of some of the other words. If you guys can think of them, drop them in here. When you use that in your search, you will find remote jobs. Fantastic. I love that. All right. Keywords to avoid lawsuit against former employee. This is coming from Dick. He's so funny. Hate to be told what to do. Mom's coming to dinner. You're so funny. Okay. Let me get into the questions for today. And if you have questions, drop them in the chat. Our first question comes from Richard. It's so ironic. He wanted to know what I use for Wi-Fi. Uh, I say ironic because if you're just joining today, I'm, I'm doing this from my car because I had to go in search of internet. So funny. Julie Gantz says a keyword is telecommute. Perfect. Love it. So Richard, to answer your question, I don't really use Wi-Fi. I use the data on my Verizon cell phone or my AT&T cell phone. That usually gets me by. I often use it as a hotspot, which means I tether into my laptop. I very rarely use RV Park Wi-Fi. It's not reliable. Uh, although today, I probably could have got it to work, but it just felt a little too risky. Sometimes I go to Starbucks when I have to upload heavy uh, video and I don't want to chew up my data. There are other ways to go with this. You can do some tricky things with your RV or your vehicle where you can have um, Wi-Fi, your own personal kind of Wi-Fi coming through, but that I don't get into that. I can refer you to Technomadia who can break all of that technology down. But like I said, 90% of the time I get by using Verizon and AT&T data and it works just fine. Henrietta um, said in the remote work journey group, she wants to find something easy to do and low in cost. So Henrietta, I'd like more information because I feel like I don't really know what you want to do, what you're good at, what would inspire you, what skills you have. So if you're watching this, I'd love for you to just tell me a little bit more information so I can point you to more specific uh, uh, recommendations. In terms of low in cost, um, Oftentimes you don't have to pay for really anything you want to do online with the exception that if you're on sites like flex jobs or Upwork, you're going to pay a little bit of a fee. But the reason for that is they screen out the scams and Upwork is just a great place to get started. So they're taking a cut of the pay. Um, or if you want to take some training and level up your skills, of course, you're going to have to pay for that. But again, you get what you pay for. All right, Kelly says companies are becoming more and more open to remote work, so you don't always have to choose between. I can't see the full, um, ooh, can I open it up? Ah, here it is. I, you don't always have to choose between corporate or remote. Of course, it depends on what you're looking for. That is absolutely true, Kelly. And, and Kelly, I've been following your journey. I know that you worked uh, location-based and then got a remote job, I want to say about a year and a half ago, so good for you. All right, Heather, which I already answered your question, said she's freaking out about her resume because she hasn't updated it in like 20 plus years. Heather, you're not alone. Um, this is super common. This is where people get stuck and this is my secret sauce. This is what I'm good at. So the blog post that Reed actually dropped in the link over in the remote work journey group, follow that and then I will link to that here as well. Melinda said, should you ask if the position is remote when you're interviewing? So I'm assuming, Melinda, that you're in this interview and you want to know if it can be remote. And I, I saw that you got some feedback on that. This one is not a cut and dry yes or no. 
This one is you really do have to feel out the company. I would say to err on the safe side, you really don't wanna ask if it's remote until you get a job offer. Because if you ask before the job offer, it may raise a red flag and they may not wanna continue with the interview or you know the progression. But if you uh, wait till you get the offer, you know they really want you, they know that uh, you know that you're golden, you're in. Now, if you start negotiating at that point and it doesn't work for them, hey, at least you got a job offer and maybe you can convince them, which lots of people do, and I have a lot of material on that, both um, free on my blog and then of course, um, certainly in the Remote Work 101 course. All right, Jean just joined. I'm an accountant. Are there more jobs out there for working for a company or working for myself? Jean, both. Accounting, bookkeeping, tax accountant. These are all really hot jobs. Um, these are some of the top remote jobs right now. You could go either way with an agency. You could go on Upwork. You could start your own business. The sky is the limit for you. All right, let's talk to uh, Spirit which I love that name. Spirit said she was looking for um, VA agencies. You know, what are the top VA agencies out there? Well, the easy thing to do is just Google virtual, oh, VA stands for virtual assistant. The easiest thing to do is just Google virtual assistant Spirit and just see what kind of agencies come up. There's so many, I didn't want to link to the top because they're all different. They all have different pay scales. But I wanna challenge you a little bit to consider going out on your own, meaning freelancing or starting your own VA business. I actually have a blog post on More Than a Wheel In that says can, you, can a virtual assistant actually make $10,000 a month? So the reason I'm telling you this is because you'll just make more money. You can certainly work for an agency to get started. Nothing wrong with that. You'll get some training, you'll get some clients but you just won't have as much earning potential as you would if you go out on your own. So I just want you to be open-minded about it. I don't need you to rule it out or absolutely do it. I just wanna plant the seed that if you've got the skill sets, it's really possible to go out on your own, charge your own rates. That could be hourly, half day, daily project rates, which means you're gonna make a lot more money than say an agency who may pay you anywhere between about 15 and 30, maybe $35 an hour and take a cut. All right, you guys, that was it for the questions submitted today. Let me see the chat. Okay, Dick Carlson says, focus your resume on what you've done for other employers. Don't say manage store or increase store sales 100, oh, say increase store sales 100%, right. When I read that, I was like, why not? That's such a great thing to say, right. So what Dick is talking about is putting results on your resume. So instead of saying, oh, I used to file, um, I used to file and organize. No, you want to say I built an organization structure that saved the company, you know, 10 hours a month of lost documents or employees searching in multiple places. I mean, that's off the top of my head. So go clean that up if you actually write that. Uh, Pam Johnson, what type of skills do you need for VA work? Pam, uh, I'd like for you to go see uh, the article on More Than a Wheeling called, Can a v Virtual Assistant Make Up to $10,000 a Month? I break that down, but it's gonna be anything from email management, blog posting, blog uh, writing a little bit, copywriting, social media management. I, I, there's like a hundred different things. So I, I don't wanna toss them all out because there's just so many. Ah, uh, Dave Chapman, hello Chappie, good to see you. Love it, love it, love to see new faces. I mean, I love when everybody joins, but um, it's great that new folks are here. All right, I'm gonna recap the top six things, top six tips for finding remote jobs. Number one, networking. Number two, you gotta know your skills, and remember, if I ask you the three things you're best at, you gotta be able to answer the question off the top of your head. Number three, refresh your resume for a remote work resume. Number four, look in the right places. Pick your top three platforms, really dig into those. Number five, you've gotta know some basic technology, but you don't need too much, just enough. And number six, you have to change your thinking, which means the self-talk you have about what you're capable of. Um, tell yourself why, you, why someone would hire you. What are you good at? What can you offer? How do you add value? That's it for today, you guys. Thank you for joining me live. 
in my car. This is what nomad life is all about. I hope that you see that even when you have an internet challenge and you have a little bit of a snag here and there, there are always workarounds. You can always find a solution. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, keep commenting. And I will, of course, go into the comments and respond after the live. Thanks. Bye-bye.